Hi, I'm Nico. Thank you for joining. Today we're going to talk about photographic style. We're going to have a look at the work of different artists who are known for having a very striking, unique style. And we're going to break it apart and analyze it to figure out what is it that makes their vision consistent and original. It's going to be exciting. So first off, we need to define what is a photographic style. And it's not just the look of an image. It's not something you can download and add as a preset on Lightroom and be done with it. A photographer's style is a combination of everything they do, every decision that they make, and the way they make those decisions consistently throughout their career. So I came up with those six criteria that we can look for in a photographer's work. And if we find consistency in any of those, then we'll have defined that photographer's style. Now, I don't think all six points are necessary. If you want to be consistent throughout a project, you don't need to be consistent on all six. I would say that it takes a minimum of two of those to define one style. So what we're going to do now is look at some famous bodies of work by different photographers. And with the help of my list, find those points of consistency. Now for each photographer, I've highlighted the points I'm going to mention while looking at their work. It does not mean that they don't also display other points. It's just the ones I'm focusing on. So starting with Martin Parr, consistency of subject matter. We have a very early image of his, 1978, 42 years ago. But already you can see a British lady turning her back, a fancy hat, teacups, a lunch table. This is the subject matter of British, normality, Sunday brunch and lunch. This is the subject matter that Parr is going to pursue his whole career. And that's part of his style. Next with William Eggleston, we're going to look at repetition of motives. In his book, William Eggleston's Guide, uh, you can see a motive coming back. And it's the one where he puts subject in front of a bush full of flowers. It's like a fireworks of color exploding behind the subject. He does it again here with the lady in the sofa. He does it again here with the tree in bloom. And somewhere else in the book, he does it in reverse with the flowery bush this time obscuring the subject of the photograph. That means he is aware of this trope of his and he's using it to subvert our expectations by reversing the order of foreground and background. It's a masterful use of style in the building of a coherent photo essay. Next up is the French photographer Lise Sarfati and the fashion magazine book produced by Magnum. What's remarkable about this series is the consistency of her perspective, of her vantage point. You can see that the ladies in those photographs always occupy exactly the same space in the frame. You could like break out a ruler and measure them against each other, which means that Sarfati is always using the same lens and standing at the same distance. This is a great example of how you don't need to stay up all night and think about your style. Your style will find you. She probably just instinctively picked the distance where she's comfortable to talk to her subjects and still feel in the scene, but be far enough to include surroundings. And this is how her style started. Next up is the famous portrait photographer Platon. And uh, what we're going to pay attention to in those portraits is that uh, his lighting and his gear is very consistent. He's using the same lens from the same vantage point, giving him the same kind of framing and perspective, and he's using the same light. You can notice it's always this like, face coming out of the dark with a big, bright, specular highlight on the forehead and the butterfly shadow under the nose. Here he does exactly the same light, but in color. So you can see it's not about the post-production or how his picture like are made to look. They were the same from capture. Platon's subject matter is also consistent. It's fame and power, famous and powerful men. And then there's what I call the level of refinement. It's um, basically the complexity of images. With Platon, they're very simple. The subject is always in the middle with not much clutter. If suddenly Platon went to do street photography with six subjects in the frame, that would be out of his style, even if the light and the gear used were consistent. Next up is National Geographic photographer William Albert Allard. And um, I just want to have a quick look at two portraits that he made of young boys 15 years apart. So you can see that he probably switched cameras 10 times in the meanwhile, and he was probably shooting different films, but those pictures look strikingly similar. 
is the same framing he cut at the waist for both boys is the same soft light coming from the side he found a way to make them do something with their hands both times and of course the motifs repeated the black suspenders on a white shirt so you can see that his style is absolutely not depending on gear or post-production and now it's time for a surprise quiz Belgian photographer Harry Gruyère I'm gonna show you some pictures but I'm not gonna say what I see in those and I'm gonna let you figure out if you can find some points of consistency or some areas where it's really not consistent afterwards we'll go through the whole segment again and this time I will tell you what I see Svon. This is an anthology of his pictures made in Belgium between 1980 and 1970, so that's early in his career, and about halfway through the book, he switches to color, which is the medium he still uses to this day. And time's up. So, did you find any? One, two, all six? What are the points of consistency in this work? The first one is a composition trope. It's the use of symmetry. Images like this one are perfectly symmetrical. Uh, we could fold them at the middle. This one too. It's basically every other page. There's an image that's perfectly symmetrical in the first part of this book. Uncanny. The next thing I wanted you to see is that obviously when he switched to color, he dropped that and the images are no longer composed symmetrically. Now his compositions are more complex and break into geometrical forms, but most importantly he composes with color, using often red in the foregrounds, blue in the backgrounds and every other color in between. That's what's remarkable. He did not just start buying color film instead of black and white, he actually transformed in depth his entire visual language. This one is a perfect example. The old Gruyère would have made it symmetrically and would have made it work with the lady in the center, but the new Gruyère, who works in color, composes things differently. It's brilliant. The other thing I hope you noticed is that the subject matter of the work stays the same. It's parades, crowds in the street, religious events, life in Belgium. So even though it changed a lot of his style, the subject matter and his obsession stay the same. Why every photographer has a style and should have a style, should want to have a style, it's because photography is storytelling. It's a medium meant to exchange ideas and any idea or concept that's in your photograph, I call it the story. And style helps your story. Style is one of your storytelling tools. Uh, let's have a look at the Blade Runner 2049, but it's a trope that's very common in cinema, is how the villain talks. Back in the day, the villain in the big Hollywood movie used to have an uh, Eastern European accent. Even before that, maybe they used to have German accents. That's how you knew it was the villain. Now in Blade Runner 2049, as you can see on the script, the villain before he says anything that uh, incriminates him, you can see that he talks very strangely. He calls clones angels, he calls his place the hut. So there is something about that character. At this point of the story, you don't know yet that he's the villain, but the strange way that he talks is the director's way of saying, pay attention to the character. That character is not normal in this world. It doesn't talk like the other characters that you have met up to this point. So pay attention to him. And that's where a style is a storytelling tool. In your photography, it's the same. If you're building a photo essay, some pictures through style are going to grab the audience's attention and stand out. And this is you telling the audience, pay attention to whatever is on that picture. It's important to the story. A very easy example uh, is flash photography. Photographers who use flash 
when they wouldn't need to, when there's enough light around and there's natural light limiting the subject. The use of flash is a way of saying, hey, pay attention, there is authorship here. I did something on purpose. I did not just point at this thing. I added light to it, so look at it. Other tools include shallow depth of field, composition devices, framing, with a frame inside the frame to drag the eye to a special place, the use of color, the use of contrast, and all the points that we've been looking at earlier. Make your style a tool for storytelling. So that was our video for today. I would encourage you to look at your own photo library and the photographers that you admire and try to break apart what makes their style. Remember, it's all there on the surfaces of the images. There is no magic. You can break it apart and you can figure it out. That's it for today. I'll talk to you some other time about some other topic. Cheers.